Good morning, everyone. Josh Armstrong here from US Workboats, and today we're going to talk about one of the simplest tools that we use in the shop here when we're fabricating aluminum. It's a handheld router, folks. It's a really, really simple tool. This is a half inch, uh, or sorry, this is a one half horsepower uh, machine. It's got uh, variable speed on it. It goes anywhere from 8,000 to 24,000 RPM. Got an on off switch on it. That's really about the only thing that it does is it turns in a circle and we stick a bit in here, let's call it hold, or we stick the bit in there and tighten it in. When we go to adjust the depth, there's this little clip on here. In this clip, we undo it. Everything's made easy for us with tools these days. It twists to adjust the height of the cable, the platform, and we tighten it down. That's really, and then it's got a couple of handles on it. Now, we, we do just a few operations with this thing. It's extremely simple. It's also really safe. I don't know, I've never ever seen anyone hurt themselves with this tool. I suppose anything is possible. I don't know how you could hurt yourself with it, but probably somebody could figure out how to hurt themselves. But I just don't know how. I suppose one thing is it does turn. So long hair, loose clothing, those little stupid things on your hoodie. I suppose we wouldn't want to have any of those because it's a turning tool. We can use it by hand on a piece of, uh, we're going to use it on aluminum plate. Of course, it works on wood and other. We also can take and we can put it on, mount it to a table. It's called the router table. And they make and sell them and those are okay. We could buy one of those, but you can actually fabricate and make one that's a little bit, nice, a little bit nicer. And we need to go ahead and do that. I've got some designs for them. And if it's on a little bit of a table, we can actually do more work with it. That's the tool. We're going to go over a real simple couple operations with it. Okay, when we're talking about uh, router bits, there's different kinds and there's a couple of different styles that we're going to use here. This one is designed to cut just a round radius on the edge of something. So we would call it a radius bit and uh, some people would call it in the slang term, they would call it like a round over bit. But, you know, obviously, if we're going to have a, a thicker piece of material, we might want to clean that edge up so it was nice and uniformly smooth. But the way that they're measured, actually, here, everyone, and I don't know, it's a little bit hard to see because I'm going blind and also because this is a real small radius. But right here, we can see that this is a 1 8 radius. And where we're measuring from is to the bottom of the cut, to the top of the radius. So it's a one eight. We use that once in a while. It's kind of about the smallest we'd ever use. And this is about the biggest we'd ever use. And this one here, so it's a little bit hard to see. And it's usually going to say on our box what that's going to be. But it's going to go from here to there. And that's a half inch radius. And I don't know if you can see it very well, but it's usually going to say on the box what it is. That's about the biggest we're ever gonna use. You wouldn't want a half inch radius unless you had a one inch plate or thicker because this bearing has to support on the flat part, okay? So this bearing, if it doesn't get supported, you know, this thing won't work. So this one we're almost never gonna use because it's on the very top end. And this one's about the smallest we would ever use. So neither one of these is very good to have and I'm not too surprised that when I looked through a router box, didn't really find any of the ones that I wanted. Uh, um, something where there's a 3 16 radius, a quarter inch radius, a 3 8 radius. Those are gonna be more of the ones we like. Actually, probably a quarter inch radius is gonna be the best for the most things. Not surprisingly, I couldn't find one. Those are a radius bit or a slang roundover bit. The next kind here, uh, is designed to cut a straight facet on there. And, you know, they might call that a chamfer bit. And anyways, it has an angle. And uh, this one is a 45. And it is measured from this top surface down. Okay, I don't have an angle finder around me, but this is the way that you would measure it is from square on the top here, okay? And that, well, sorry, that one's not a 45, this one's a 45. 
This one is a 45. We measure it from there to there with an angle finder, and that one's a 45 degree. It's what it's going to cut. This one, now, you might call it a 60, you might call it a 30, uh, but what we should do is call it what it is. It's a 30 degree because it's cutting from this surface to this surface, a 30 degree. This one is more commonly used in our weld preparation. This one could be used in a weld preparation. It would, sorry, I'm moving around a little bit. It would depend a little bit on the procedure. Uh, it's designed to cut a straight facet on there, uh, real useful, cuts real good. Both these are on the largest sort of diameter size that we might want. Actually, I'd prefer to have one just a little bit smaller than that. But it's gonna work really good. I'm gonna show you how to use it. This here is a piece of 3 8 plate, okay? It's 3 8 of an inch thick, and it's about the thinnest we're ever gonna use a router on, probably. Maybe we're gonna get some quarter inch if we're doing a weld prep, but if we're gonna do radius on both sides of that, we're gonna read it, this is the 1 8 um, radius bit. What we have to have is when this thing is cutting down the right depth, this bearing here has to be on this flat surface. And if it's not, if it's not supported, then obviously we have no control over our bit. I'm gonna set that up in the machine and I'm gonna show you guys how to use it. There's a couple of tricks with it, it's really simple. So when we're talking about router bits, well, there's a few different terms that we need to know. On this little tiny one here, and if you guys can see that this part is the collet. Uh, and, you know, it's the size, obviously, that fits in our right router. It fits into their uh, collet, collet holder, size of the shaft, okay? That tightens on there real simple. That's a nut, it squeezes on it. They make, you know, for CNC machines, they make ones that load up awesome. We wanna push it all the way down tight before we tighten it up. We don't want it to be a variable in there. We wanna push it all the way down we tighten it up. So we've gone over a couple of different types of bits that we're going to use. Basically, I'm going to go over how to change them. And so we want to take that and put that in the collet, the collet in the collet holder. We want to push it all the way in tight. Okay. Now they make a couple of wrenches. I think that's a one inch, and they have it tightens one against the other, and they make a couple of thin wrenches that fit inside here. But a lot of this stuff doesn't fit inside here, and somebody probably already lost the wrenches. This is a fairly new tool. Somebody's broken the table already. Those are replaceable, inexpensive. I don't know how you could break that, but apparently somebody did. They probably dropped it on the floor. Anyways, I'm gonna loosen that off. Since I don't have those nice little wrenches, I'm gonna do something else. I'm just gonna extend it out like that. That way I can take a couple of tools. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold this with one wrench. I'm gonna get another wrench here. I'm gonna tighten that on there tight. And that's all we do to change the tool. Okay, so we got this little piece of 3 8 plate and we're gonna put a 1 8 radius on both sides of that. That's the operation we're gonna do right now. We've got our tool secured in there. We've jammed that one nut against the other. It's held tight. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna set the height of the deck. This is the deck here. And this clamp is gonna hold it. We're set, it. and what we're gonna use is a square here go across to see about the height, okay? We're gonna set that and we're gonna twist it back and forth. Real simple until we're not getting quite getting contact on the tool, and we're gonna tighten that on there. That's the only thing we're gonna requ be required to do, and we can go in there and we can see where it's gonna cut. Now, when we test it, I like to usually test it on a piece of scrap before I test it, or before I start using it on my part. So I don't like to do stuff wrong and have it turn out where I just wrecked my, my part. So I would test it on a piece of scrap first, and actually this is a piece of scrap, so we can mess with it a little bit and we can even mess it up. I'm gonna show you how to mess it up and I'm gonna show you how to do it right. But when we're making parts, we don't mess up our good part. We start with a little piece of scrap. That's our setup. The tool's ready to use. It's just gonna need a little bit of wax and we'll go ahead and we'll plug it in. We're gonna need some safety glasses. And that's about the only things we're gonna need. Okay, so I got my safety glasses on. I've gone ahead and one more thing that I needed to do was clamp my work. So I got that clamped down. I've got some wax. I've also set the speed around 75%. I'm gonna go ahead and turn the machine on. I'm gonna put a bit of wax on it. I'm gonna put it on. I can also rub a little bit on here sometimes. So maybe an easy way to get started. This thing. One thing I forgot to show you is this arrow on here. It's the direction it's turning. 
One of the things that's important is we're gonna go so that we're cutting, so that it's taken off new material and it's gonna leave a nice smooth cut. If we were to go back this way with it, it's gonna leave it like a, a bad edge. It's gonna leave a sort of mushy edge on there. It's not gonna look right. So we're gonna go that direction. All right, I'm gonna flick it back on and make it cut. Okay, that wasn't too bad, everybody. We can take and we can do that on the other side. Okay, so we're set up, we've clamped our piece, we're ready to do side two. Really important here, this tiny little bearing here needs to hit the surface and it doesn't want to be slipping around that radius. And if it is, we have to change our height or our, our bit so we have a different radius. Otherwise, it's gonna gouge into the top there. This is looking good. We're gonna go ahead and I'm gonna cut. You're gonna watch down here what's gonna happen. Okay guys, I did side two, but I purposely stopped before the end and I want to show you how to do it right and I'm gonna show you how to mess it up. Right now we got a perfect radius, both sides. There's no, when you run your finger on there, there's no little gouge or bump or whatever, and there's no, it's nice and smooth. I haven't touched that up with anything but that tool. I just wiped some of the wax off. It's nice and clean. It's perfect. Now I'm going to set the machine up wrong, and I'm going to show you how the results turn out. Be right back. Okay, I've gone ahead and done it wrong, guys, for you, because I said I was going to. I cut this end and I cut this end, and I set it so it was too deep. And it cut quite deep here and left a really undesirable edge. And then when I got over here, where it was radius on the other side, it was even less desirable, because it had, didn't have anywhere to support that wheel. It left a big mess. So I was saying that this guy, this machine is extremely simple to use, and it is. So let's just go ahead and do it right. It's easy to do it right. This is wrong, I just did it right. Hey guys, I went ahead and changed my bit over and I'm doing like a chamfer or a bevel. And I got a 30 degree bevel here because I'm gonna, I'm gonna pretend this is a weld coupon and I'm gonna, I'm gonna prepare it. Okay, so this now has a bevel on here, and the, the angle of the bevel is dictated by the bit, and this is what's called a land, and we're gonna get into that with welding. That's got a land and a bevel. This land is a little bigger than most of our weld procedures. I'd set that for quarter, this is three eighths, but, so we could go deeper, but I'm just giving you an example of the only two things that we're gonna do with that router. We're gonna radius it, or we're gonna put a, a chamfer on there for various reasons, usually welding. That's about all that tool does, folks. I'm gonna show you a couple things that you should know and we're gonna be done. So, you know, we can obviously cut wood with a router. It's actually designed for cutting wood. We don't like wood very much, but sometimes we'll use it here. But the main thing I'm talking about is aluminum. Now, I've also talked about holding our pieces down. I had the other piece clamped down. This piece is hard to clamp. We, we can either weld it down, or the other thing we can do is secure the router. That's why I was talking about having a table. So if we secure this, we've got a handheld piece, we bring it in, we bring it down into the machine, and we can spin it round, or whatever we may be doing with this thing. And it's like we can get in closer with a small bit if the actual machine itself is secured to a table. That's all I got to say about routers today, today folks, handheld routers. There's obviously lots of types. And we do have a big CNC router as well. It's a you know much bigger machine. But this is just talking about this little handheld thing. Simple little tool. Let's let's not break the base. If we do, let's put a new part on there. And let's be safe and let's get something done and do a good job of it. Thanks for watching.